you're going to write two inequalities, tell me what one of the or one of the equations is. Tell me what one of them is. Um, it's the P. Tell me the equation you're going to write to solve. Thank you, sir. Six minus P equals four. You have to write because it's an absolute value equation. Another equation. Which one is? What is it? Uh, six minus P equals four. Very good. Change that positive four to negative four. That's the second equation again because the absolute value asks how far is it from zero. You want it to be four units from zero. That's either a positive four on this side or a negative four from this side of zero. Those are the two values. Positive four, negative four. Now we're going to solve both of these equations. And I'm going rather quickly because it's just big work. And I want to see what we can do. If I move six, I'm going to change its sign. It's not here anymore. The signs are different. I subtract, keep the sign of a larger one leaving only negative p on that left. And here comes the problem, I think, that some of us may have had. If negative p is negative 2, I need to find out what positive p is, not negative. So again, you can think of it as you can multiply or divide anything to anything as long as you do it to everything, right? Or if I change this symbol from negative to positive, what must I do to everything? Change its sign. Negative becomes positive. So that's one of the solutions. I saw the other one again real quickly. I'll move the 6 over here and change the signs. Now the signs are the same, so I... And we stay negative, and now I've got negative P equal to negative 10, so positive P is equal to positive 10. And I think, I just wanted to show that to you so that I ensured that you knew to do that. Are you okay with what you turned in yesterday? Did you get positive 2 and positive 10? If you had, like... Negative p equals negative two plus four, and then you're you're changing the signs of both things because you have two minus four. Then. Yeah, or to add them together first, and then just change that one thing. Okay. So now we've got two values. Here's the new lesson for today. That you're going to use the paper we just got back with a grade on it. Underneath every problem that you did yesterday, you're going to graph these solutions. Did you, did you understand what I just said? and then you're going to give it back to me. Okay, so you're going to do 55 again, and all you're going to do is add this graph. Here's how you graph. You've got two values, 2 and 10. Those are the two solutions for this absolute value equation. How do you think you would communicate that those are the two solutions on a graph? No, it's not, it's not all, no, it's not everything in between, which is what that communicates. Well, but that's not. That's what we're talking about. It's not. We wouldn't use parentheses and brackets because it's not an Just inequality. Ten and it's an equation. All I have are these two equations. These two solutions. I mean, circle two and circle ten. You're gonna put a point. Oh, point, point. And then a point. Go to the next problem. <laughs> cool. Winning. You're gonna do that with every one. I think there was only six or seven problems, David, yesterday. Uh, you'll get that from somebody so you can solve and then just graph them real quick. 55, 10, 22. All right, even. So that's that's yesterday's and how to graph it. Any questions? Excellent. The next lesson then is going to be uh, solving inequalities. And it's a little funky. So I need you to stay with me today as we go through it. Absolute. So we're going to look at solving and graphing. Absolute value in equalities, not equations. So now we're talking about brackets. Now we're talking about parentheses and that kind of stuff. But we're going to look at solving these, and we're going to look at graphing them. So not an equation; it's an inequality. So it starts out like this. Now here's how I'm, here's how I'm going to try to get you to see it. Stay with me. Again, this is an absolute value. So it's asking, what can I plug in here for x? So that the, what I get over here is greater than 13 things from 0. So talk to me again, Dave. x is greater than 2. OK. So he thinks he's already got there. Let me try to help everybody else get there. But, but, but look at the, think of the mental thing I went through with you yesterday with inequalities. This says I want something greater than 13 units from zero. Well, think about the number line. Here's zero. Here's the number line. Where over here is 13 units from zero? 13. 13. Positive. And negative. 
and negative over here. Those are the two things that are 13 units from zero. Well, we want all of the things that are more than that away from zero. So use your body parts and point in the direction. Where are the things that are bigger, further from zero than this? Point. Where are the things that are more than 13 from zero? Point. What direction are you going to point? That's right, to the right of that, right? Greater than or less than? Greater than positive 13 away from zero. Now look over here. Look over here. Negative 13. Where, point again, using your body parts, your gestures, which direction you would, po would you point to be further than this from zero? Point. Point. Let me see your point. Very good. Right? Is that less than negative 13 or is that greater than negative 13? Less than. That's the, that's, what, that's the picture that I wanted you to get real quick. Because that tells you how to write the two inequalities. So let's go through it again. Just like yesterday, I'm going to write two inequalities. Exactly what I see here and exactly what I see there. But I'm not going to write an equal sign. I want to write an inequality. So again, I get you to see that positive 13. Which direction is greater than this from zero? Point. So what inequality symbol are you going to write? Very good. Very good. I want it further from 13 from zero. Now let's talk about the other one. Get you to see this. What's the other number I write? Negative. Because that's also 13 units from zero. So if I'm looking at negative 13, again, point, which direction do you have to go to be further than that from zero? Is that less than? Then that's what you write. That's your inequality. You see that logical picture? reduces to 9 halves, and it's negative, right? So that's the other solution. That's all I had to teach you today, except for the graphing part. Let's graph this inequality. Brackets and parentheses, right? What are we going to do? This says at 2, right? So we'll just put 2. Now that says negative, so I kind of cheated a little bit because I've done this before. You need to put 2 and negative 9 halves appropriately together. Now, I'm not asking for a bunch of tick marks. You don't have to make it even. It doesn't have to be a ruler. All I want you to do is communicate to me the boundaries, okay? So negative 9 halves. Hard to see where that's on the number line, right? What could you do to see it better? Um, where do I put, put it? it what? Uh, put it in a mixed number, right? Or a decimal. Mm -hmm. Four and a half. Two goes into nine four times one half, right? That's easier to see on the number line, that mixed number. So negative four and a half, I know it's to the left. I don't really care that it's accurately spaced. I'm not getting hung up on that. You hear me? So all I'm doing is just getting those borders, and then I'm graphing this appropriately. Let's look at the two. It says bigger than two, right? So what symbol am I going to write? A parenthesis or a bracket at two? Parenthesis. Which direction is it going to open? David says to the right, to your right. Now, here, uh, let me share something with you to help you. If you write the letter first in all of your sentences, in all of your statements, you can read from right to left, can't you? Inequality, but don't. Read, always write the letter first. If you do that, you can trust the direction this points. If that helps you. Which direction is the parenthesis going to open? That way. See it pointing that way? You can trust that. If you write the letter first, you write the variable first. So it's going to open that way. But how far that way? So communicate that with Shane that if you would. Okay? Now let's go to the negative four half. Four and a half. What direction is it going to open? The way this is pointing, right? You want it littler than, less than. Always trust the direction this is pointing. If you write the letter first. 
Left that right direction. Prince here, Bracken. Prince. One. Because it's not less than or equal to. Not equal to, it's simply less than. So it's going to go that direction. How far? Or F. Boom. I love that Okay, one final example. How do you know how to write these inequalities? I'm going to put a positive value and I'm going to make a negative, right? Negative 0.125. But I don't know what symbol to put in between. Is it going to be less than or is it going to be greater than? I don't know yet. So here's how you decide. This starts out this direction, less than. They want it to be closer to zero than this. Closer to zero. So here's the positive. Here's positive 1.25. In your number line, here's your negative. Right? So point again. Focusing on this, positive 1.25, which direction is closer to zero? Less than that point to zero. Less than. Right? Which direction are you going to point? Very good. So that's less than. So let's go ahead and write it right now. This is the positive one. What symbol am I going to write in between? Less than or equal to in this case. Now here's the negative. Negative 1.2 or 0.125. You want it to be closer to zero than this point. Which direction is closer to zero than this point? Point. What direction is it? Where, where are the things that are closer, I'm zero, to zero than this? Point. Wrong. Point. Well, point so others can see you. Right? You're going to point that direction. Right? That's what things are greater. So what, what symbol is that? Is that a greater than direction or a less than direction? When you point it that way, is that greater than or less than? It's greater than. So that's why I put in between. And see how that was a little confusing? I have to get you to think that so that you're writing the inequality statements correctly. Now we just solve, moving this over here, becomes positive. Signs are the same, so I add in stay. Leaving W by itself. Moving negative 5 over here becomes positive. I change the sign. Now the signs are different, so I have to subtract. And that's what W is over there. Now I have to graph it. So let's graph it quickly. What two numbers am I going to put on my little line? 5.25. 5. So let me put 5 here. Now where would I put the other one? Like to the right of it. To the right of it. Okay? I don't really care how far. Put it to the right. And now, brackets or parentheses? At five. Bracket or parentheses? Bracket. Why? Because it's less than or equal to. Because it's less than What direction is it going to open the bracket? To the left. See where this is pointing? Oh, uh, uh, to the right. What direction is that pointing? To the right. So where would the bracket open? To the right. What about it? Five to five. Bracket or parentheses? Bracket. What direction is it going to open? Because this is pointing left, I'm going to go left. And I can trust that again because W, W is written first. W is written first, I can trust the direction it points. Okay? Do I color in between? That's, that's communicating everything in between, right? With the interval notation. I still want exactly what you mean, like, then you'll can trust the direction. If the letter is written, first in the sentence you write. If you write W first, W and then the symbol, you can trust the direction that it's pointing. It's pointing left. That's the direction your bracket or parenthesis opens. Point it right. Point it right. So at two, I'm going to open right. Point it left. So there I'm going to open left. Good questions. Anything else?